Hello and welcome to Dairy Pod. I'm John Penry from Dairy Australia. In this episode, Dairy Australia's General Manager, Sustainable Dairy, Charlie McAlone, speaks with Western Australian dairy farmer Michael Partridge about the trade and export opportunities available to farmers and the relevance for the state's fresh milk production. The pair discuss the importance of growth and opportunities for Australian dairy, as well as the need for free trade agreements and the work required to remain competitive. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Charlie McElone. I'm the General Manager of Sustainable Dairy at Dairy Australia. Um, and today I'm joined by Michael Partridge, a dairy farmer from Western Australia and representative on the ADF Policy Advisory Group for Economics and Trade. Um, Michael's also a past president of WA Dairy Farmers uh, Dairy Council. And um, so to start today, which we're going to talk a bit about trade and the importance of trade in the context of a WA dairy farmer being Michael. I think we'll start by just handing over to Michael. Michael, can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about you and your farm? Yeah, good day, Charlie. Nice to be here. Um, yeah, I'm a sustainable dairy farmer from uh, southwest of Western Australia, and uh, we've been uh, farming this same piece of dirt for 135 years. Um, so that's where I kind of take the sustainability from, um, that we've kind of been looking after this bit of ground and increasing production every year um, for 135 years. Um, my son is uh, on the farm full-time now. He's fifth generation. And so I've, I farm with my wife, Leanne, and uh, son, Harrison. Uh, Mum and dad have kind of retired recently, and our daughter, Oakley, who happens to be working in Melbourne at the moment. Excellent. So, so tell, and tell me about about dairy farming in Western Australia, Michael. I mean, um, what's the sentiment now? How has that changed over time? Um, where, where is the industry up to right now? Um, the WA, we're kind of steady as she goes. Um, that's kind of uh, generally how WA fits. Um, we have around uh, a bit over 100 dairy farmers left in, in the country. Um, but over the period since uh, 2000, uh, where we came from 500 dairy farmers to 100, our our production for the state has has maintained pretty close um, to to a similar level. Um, so we've done a, a pretty good job at, as a state um, adjusting to uh, different different markets as such. Um, and yeah, we've kind of I think we have the we did have the highest cow per herd. I think we got the, we come second to Tasmania now. Um, and our production per cow is up there, either one or two nationally as well. And are farmers generally feeling feeling confident about the future of the industry at the current time? In general, we produce milk in the most isolated dairy market in the world. Our responsibility is to produce fresh milk for the most isolated city in the world, which is Perth. Um, and we do that in the driest state and the driest continent in the world. So we have our have our challenges. I don't think I've told too many lies there, but um, someone m- may prove me wrong. Um, but that's pretty well in a nutshell where we are. So um, I think we do a good job at at doing what um, our market wants us to do. Mm. So so today we're going to be talking a bit about about trade, and it's important, you know, in that context about the one of the most isolated markets in the world being the Western Australian market. Um, Give us a bit of a perspective about where trade sits for a WA dairy farmer, considering that um, you know, you're, you're traditionally labelled as one of the fresh milk states supplying into the domestic fresh milk market. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. A lot, of, lot of our milk is, um, you know, fresh milk, either um, you know your, your white milk, and we also uh, very big uh, flavoured milk drinkers in this state um second to south australia but um it's it's pretty high up there i think um master's ice coffee outsells um coca-cola in this state as does uh, farmers union um i think was the first beverage in the world to outsell coca-cola um in a beverage sense um so yeah we kind of like our iced coffees um and we've got lots of tradies and lots of miners who enjoy their iced coffee so they've kept um the WA dairy industry in the profit, um, while we had uh, a downturn in the uh, white milk space, 
um, with the down down campaigns of the past. Um, we've had improvement in that space, which is uh, very well received across the supply chain. Um, but the, more importantly, there always needs to be, it's what the last leader is worth and to make sure that there is a home for the last leader. Um, and that's, we've had challenges in that space in the past as well. Um, so exports are important in that it does give us uh, growth and diversity. And and what about the context in relation to your alternative markets being yeah you know, predominantly the domestic retailers, but also some of the other other WA users? I mean, how does trade fit in in that context too, Michael, and in providing different options to supply your milk? Um, well, we kind of all, all, all our um, companies over here require a, a fairly flat supply chain, so they're. Uh, supply curve so their uh, pricing um, tables kind of lead us to produce milk fairly flat all year round um, but the importance of um, our closeness to Singapore is kind of fairly mature market um, and we've had fresh milk um, go to Singapore for a long time out of WA um, more recently we've kind of been growing into the Southeast Asia and the UHT kind of spaces um and that's all important for um you know having a bit more diversity and and pla- a bit if you don't have growth you don't have the opportunity for growth um people that you got to see that there's someone wanting your milk going forward um and and it, in when we didn't have uh, a lot of exports and we had the downturn in the in the white milk uh retail sector um the, the sediment amongst farmers were wasn't very good because there was no one really wanting milk, um, more milk, and there was the value of it and the perception of what it was worth um, did take a, a, a downturn as far as how people felt. That's certainly improved and people are feeling a lot better about the future going forward. I mean, we, we hear a lot about, about WA having the nullable in between you and the east coast and and that provides a level of insulation from that competition particularly in the fresh liquid milk space what how do you see that dynamic and and your association with with the milk pools from the east coast and 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 what that means from a wa farmer's perspective um look you would if the farmers got themselves together and um you could use the Nullarbor as a a potential a win for the industry because it costs a lot more to bring uh, product all this way to to WA. However, it's never it's never worked like that. It's worked fundamentally against us. Um, well, we don't have access to the the broad markets as the East Coast farmers do. We don't. Um, we've got uh, two or three processors who may want your milk rather than the other person this year to the next. Um, but predominantly, not many people change processes because they you, you, you put supplying your, your processor who uh, requires a certain amount of milk and everyone just ticks along nicely. Whereas um, the previous two years where you've kind of, the East Coast has come out at very good times. Um, there was a hell of a lot of competition for milk. Uh, that competition was less uh, less here than it was there because everyone had the amount of milk they require and just ticked along light nicely. Um, milk prices um, did improve. Um, it was only when I went to the East Coast that uh, colleagues over there were saying, what's the bloody hell going on in WA? You're still getting the lowest price in the country. However, um, now where our prices are, that they're quite reasonable and there'd be less downward pressure on ours right now compared to, say, uh, Victoria and Tasmania because um, the bit of the downturn in the uh, commodity export space. Yeah, sure. So, so think so. Thinking then about about your exports. I mean, do you do you see an opportunity in your region? What what are the big opportunities for for trade and exports from a a WA farmer's perspective, I'm conscious of your proximity 
into the Asian region. How do, you know is is that recognised in WA with with the the industry? Look, I always find it very interesting. But you know, being involved with the ADF and the uh, policy advisory group in the uh, trade space, and hearing uh, reports from people like yourself and other DA colleagues, it's always um, very interesting to know where growth markets are and um, it's up to our individual processes to um, find individual markets for themselves but um, knowing what potential there is is it does give us a, a bit of uh, uh, optimism uh, going forward um, the the big one uh, and you know more about the free trade agreement with um, Indonesia um, and and they still fairly protective on the fresh milk uh, space. Um, anything fresh is and, and to that closer south eastern um, South East Asia markets is WA's advantage. Uh, once once it's uh, not fresh, um, it can come around in the ship from New Zealand or or Victoria. We it, we lose some of that competitive advantage. So it's kind of niche niche products. So. So we're hearing a little bit, and I mean, it's obviously at a national level, um, you know, we've heard in recent times about the impacts of a shrinking milk pool. What does that mean in the context of a WA farmer, Michael? Because, you know, from your perspective, that in the industry has been largely managing its supply for, for some time. Um, where, where, what do you see the implications of that change in the milk pool for, for you as a WA dairy farmer? Um, well, look, as a, I don't think much will change for us as a WA dairy farmer, but I think potentially um, the disadvantages which we have compared to um, the East Coast is, you know, you guys have got lots of people who want your milk for lots of different markets. And, and diversity and growth is important because sometimes the world market's better than the domestic market. Um, so... Be careful what people wish for. I know some people think, oh, you know, the domestic, um, you know, the Queensland price is very good because uh, their domestic market is short and it costs a, a lot to cart, cart milk up there. So it's got a um, world price plus transport type 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 issues. Um, but when you, we, we've had a lot of, uh, there's a hell of a lot of Eastern States product um, other than the liquid fresh stuff in our supermarket shelves um, and you're seeing more and more of that in the east coast as far as uh, true imports from uh, New Zealand and Europe um, so we kind of are getting getting a shrinking milk pool but we're also getting a lot more imports coming into the country um, so we've got to stay um, competitive um, at a domestic level and an export level but we've also got to find our best um, export markets, which we can compete in. Mm. So, so if you're thinking about the future of the WA dairy industry, Michael, and and where your business sits in that, what what would you hope for in terms of the outlook for your industry, and and what does good look like in terms of a market mix, where WA is positioned within that, um, and and the, as as you started the future sustainability. Of the industry, um, well, uh, the as you said, I was um, president of WA Farmers Dairy Section a few years ago, and our, our worst experience um, we've ever had was when we had farmers with no home at all, uh, and that's because after deregulation, each each of our processes had a manufacturing. Um, they all they all made butter. They all had powder plants. Um, they had, had all that, um, but that that all kind of uh, manufacturing was a, a casualty of deregulation in this state. Um, and then you don't have a home for your last leader. Um, so that's where our proximity to Southeast Asia and getting milk out of the country and always having a home for your last leader. I just can't um, show how important that is. Um, it's the last litre which drives your price. Um, if no one wants your last litre, the, the, the rest of the milk comes down. 
And if someone wants to bid more for your last litre, it drags the value of all the milk up. Um, so it's about having a home for all milk and all milk potentially, which can be produced. Michael, this, I think that's a that's a really good summary um, and an outlook for for a future. Um, thanks, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, it's good to get your insights uh, for someone who's been pretty prominent within the industry over many years. So, thanks very much for your time, Michael. Thanks, Charlie. And it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty happy place you know, at the moment, and um, hopefully it continues for a while. Thank you. To find out more about how Dairy Australia is improving market access while building and maintaining strong international trade relationships, please visit the International Dairy Markets section at dairyaustralia.com.au. We have placed this link in the episode notes. If you have any questions or ideas for future Dairy Pod episodes, you can get in contact with us by emailing dairypod at dairyaustralia.com.au. Thanks very much for listening and bye for now.